It's the Easter season leading up to Pentecost, and we have this devotion for you. There's a popular exclamation prayer of this season that has its answer, and then when you give the answer, there's, a, there's an echo back. This is how it goes. The Lord is truly risen. He has risen indeed. He has risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. Let's try that with you all, okay? The Lord is truly risen. He has risen indeed. He has risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. And now just repeat after me. This is the day. This is the day. That the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. That's a verse out of uh, the Psalms that predicts the great day of Easter or the Lord's day when he comes among us. And when Jesus rose from the dead and everything about Jesus' ministry falls into place and is all true. Because the resurrection means everything about Jesus' life. And then after the resurrection, he does all these amazing things leading up to an ascension and Pentecost. And we're going to think about that as we go through your short exercises in the Easter season. And so let us get started. The sixth week of Easter. We're on page 277. That's in your book. The faith focus, the question is, why do we say that Jesus is our good shepherd? Well, he's in charge of a flock, a flock, which is people. He said sheep are, taken, are being taken care of by a shepherd. You're my sheep. The whole world is my flock, and I'm trying to lead the flock to heaven. I'm trying to get all the flock together, too, on the earth to be together. Well, I'm a pastor, and I have a little flock, and I get to be the shepherd of the parish, and this is something that was given to me, and it's the it's a shepherd's staff. And there's also a bishop who has one of these, and he's in charge of all the churches in the area. He's, a, he's in charge of all the priests, and so he has one of these, but it's a very special one. And you look in Jesus' hand in the picture where he's the good shepherd, and you see he has a staff in his hands too. They call it a shepherd's staff or a shepherd's crook. Crook is for this part to pull the sheep in. Shepherd's staff is probably the, the better name for it, for the good shepherd. The good shepherd. Let's read together. Some of us have read stories about shepherds. Some of us have seen sheep on hillsides out in the country. At Mass, during the Easter season, we hear Jesus tell us that he is the good shepherd and we are his sheep. Once Jesus told Peter the apostle, to lead and take care of the church. He said to Peter, Feed my lambs and feed my sheep. Jesus asked Peter to be a good shepherd to all of us. Jesus is our good shepherd. A good shepherd is willing to give his life for his sheep. During Easter, we remember Jesus' love for us. Let's look at the activity called A Shepherd's Care. It's on the next page. And it's asking, read these Bible passages about the work and care of the Good Shepherd. So read it together with your family and then just repeat it and pray it once during this week. 
to conclude our prayer, I'm going to ask you to say, Shepherd me, O God. Shepherd, Shepherd me, me, O God. God. We are your little lambs. Shepherd, Shepherd me, me, O God. God. We are the sheep of your flock. Shepherd, Shepherd me, me, O God. God. I am your follower. Shepherd, Shepherd me, me, O God. God. And then we say praise the Lord at the end of this. Allelu, 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 alleluia. Praise the Lord. Happy Easter season. Happy Easter season. When we think of Easter season, we think of the Resurrection Day, Easter Sunday, and then we go all the way up to the Ascension and then the Pentecost, 50 days later after Easter. The beginning of the story is this, that on the first day of the week, meaning Sunday, where the disciples were, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And when he said that, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus, in his resurrection appearance, said to them again, Peace be with you. Now as the Father sent me, so I send you. And he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Now many days later, Jesus was with them along the Sea of Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee. And he revealed himself in this way to Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, and James and John, and two other disciples. They were out fishing, and Jesus called out to them from the shore, Children, have you caught anything to eat? And they answered him, No. He said, Cast that over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. And they cast it, and there were so many fish, they were not able to pull it in for the number of fish. Now, the disciple whom Jesus loved, John, said to Peter, It is the Lord. Simon Peter jumped from the boat and came to the shore with the other disciples later coming in the boat, dragging along a net with many fish. And Jesus said, Let's come and have breakfast. They all realized it was the Lord. And Jesus cooked the bread and gave it to them and likewise the fish. And they remembered his miracle of the bread and the fish earlier in their ministry. You know, later they, they go to the mountain for the ascension. And then Jesus said, I'm sending the Holy Spirit now to you. This is my finished work to live inside of you. And so that work is what we're praying for as we go through the Easter season, for the Holy Spirit of Jesus to live in us and through us and to give us power to be children of God. Mr. Stever, do you have that prayer? Yes, let's close with the prayer to the Holy Spirit, and it's found in the back of your book, though many of you may know it. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. Amen.